that was rough. Why don't you just take the night off? <laughs> Your game's looking weak. You could use a little help leveling up. <laughs> Go again. <laughs> Your game stinks. You're gonna need these. Stay in your game with DoorDash. Please welcome Jeremy Carey. What's up, New York City? Oh my gosh. It's nice to be on this side because I've done TV, I've been on the judges panel, and now I just get to sit up here and read some cards. This is, this is easy. But you know the one thing that hasn't changed? What's that? My feet still hurt. <laughs> and I know I shouldn't complain because some of y'all are in heels and platform boots and everything, so more props to you, but oh, my dogs are barking. So have you been having a good time here at New York Comic Con? Oh my God, I've had a blast. If you guys have seen me out there and I'll be there tomorrow too, I've been interviewing everybody and getting to meet all these amazing cosplayers and just nerds like me. So this has been a blast and a party, so yeah. Look, Jeremy, we've talked about it backstage. That's the best thing about New York Comic Con. Right now, do me a favor, everybody turn and look at all the people sitting in this room here tonight. Look at all these people here with you. Right now, you are in a room full of people that are just like you. That's right, the rules of Comic-Con. You can't see everything, too much to see. Can't buy anything, y'all ain't got enough money. <laughs> but the one thing that you can do is make new lifelong friends. So make sure to make a new friend before you leave here this weekend. So, um, I think we left your cards on the table over there, but you've got, uh, we've got Atomic Blonde here playing music. They got you, me and you uh, reading these cards. I'm ready. But there are some folks that have to come out that have a harder job. You want to tell us about them? Yeah, the judging. Man, I'm so glad that, I, again, I'm up here doing this because the cosplay is just amazing. Whether they're competing or whether they're just walking around showcasing their outfit, it's just incredibly hard work, and I've been on that side. And these judges, um, we have to thank them for all their hard work for uh, doing all the, uh, all the dirty decisions for us. Now, now, what they may or may not know is that they've been working... They're not just all day here tonight. What, 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 what's their day looked like today? Oh, my goodness. So the last time I did this, I started at like 10 in the morning, and we have to meet every single person one by one and go over every single outfit and how they made it. And these people put a lot of work into what they do. All right. Well, uh, let's start by introducing them. We're going to bring out our first judge. Please welcome to the stage uh, Marida. Marida is a cosplayer from over 20 years. During that time, her cosplay has appeared in books, magazines, TV shows, and online articles. <laughs> Merida particularly enjoys encouraging newcomers to discover a fun of cosplay by providing resources to help them learn and craft their own costumes. And how are you doing here this evening? I am doing great. All right, fantastic. Well, let's meet your fellow judges. Who's up next, Jeremy? Yes, how many of you guys are Mean Girl fans? That's what I like to hear. Welcome to the stage, Rajiv Surindra, who is known as Kevin G from Mean Girls. Rajiv is also known as a modern day renaissance man. Uh, Martha Stewart meets uh, Mr. Rogers for millennials. His DIY uh, how-to videos for AGTV's handmade YouTube channel have amassed over 10 million views. Yeah, do, yeah let's give a round of applause. Go, go, go. It's so good to see you. Now, I know you had a lot of work today. Did you, uh, are you tired yet? No, I'm excited. That's I'm on what a I high love. from seeing all the fantastic <laughs> costumes. <laughs> and our final judge here this, is this evening, please welcome Samir Bundala. <laughs> Samir is a filmmaker and multidisciplinary artist who has been cosplaying for over 12 years. With over 30 awards nationally and internationally, he represented India in the Crown Championship of Cosplay twice and has given a TED Talk on the subject. Uh, Samir, how you doing, my man? I feel like such a bad assassin. I'm sitting on stage and announcing my name and everything. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm excited. I hope the Creed doesn't know, come to know of this. All right, so judges. You've been judging, you've been looking at everybody today. Uh, what are some things that, that you're looking for here on the end? Well, whoever wants to answer the question. Rachel, go ahead. Oh, sure. We'll start um, with you. So this level of competition is next level. These are people, all of the people who entered in this could have won best in show at a normal contest. So we're looking for just that slim little razor edge of difference 
that puts somebody in that top spot of the top spots. Correct, because we want to take a championship home away again for New York. Exactly. Now, have you judged cosplay competitions before? I have not. So what did you think about it? I was blown away. I spent, I, I was that kid that was a lot of, like, the kids in this room, whereas in my parents' basement, when all my friends were out doing other things, and I was sewing. <laughs> and like, from the age of 12 years old, I was making historic costumes, and over the last 20 years, have gotten more and more like intensely obsessed with technique. So for me, what blew me away was just seeing all of the, these contestants come in, and it was just very clearly apparent how committed they were. It was so clear how many countless hours went into how many countless, that's an oxymoron, but like just, just like the dedication that they put into these, these costumes was incredible and so impressed and so motivated. All right, well now you gotta go home and start working on your next one. Exactly. All right, Samir, here they are, they're about to take the stage. Now again, what, what are you looking for last minute? Like what's gonna help you convince, you, you know, convince yourself and the other judges that this is who's walking away with the championship tonight? Uh, don't drop your wig or helmets or whatever. <laughs> That's what we care about here. This is a craftsmanship competition, and like you said, this is New York. The best of the best of the best come here, right? So we were already, we had like such a huge argument backstage to decide who we like most, and uh, now we, all of us are rooting for our favorites, and <laughs> I'm hoping the other one drops a wig. I'm, I'm, I'm just joking. It's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> all right. Well, good luck. Thank you for your service today. Uh, when, uh, I don't envy your decision here this evening because I've seen them backstage. So, audience, are you ready to get this thing started? <laughs> All right, Jeremy, what's up first? All right, so we have a many categories tonight, but the first category that we have going is the armor category. Are y'all ready to do this? Make some noise for our cosplayers. There we go. First up, welcome to the stage, Darkslayer as Sewer Samurai Leonardo from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Out of the shadows and straight from the sewers of New York comes Sewer Samurai Leonardo, leader of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, ready to lead his brothers, Raphael, Michelangelo, and Donatello against the evil Shredder and the Foot Clan. This cosplay was inspired by the classic action figure toy line from Playmates and using the new collectible versions from Super 7 as reference to bring it to life. It took about two months to fully complete and build. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was a huge part of Dark Slayer's childhood and this build is a true labor of love. Y'all make some noise for Dark Slayer. Here we have Liminal Karyu as Raiden from Metal Gear Rising. Revengeance. As a traveler from around the world, Liminal made this Metal Gear Rising Raiden costume in Canada in the course of nine months while being a full-time employee and a fashion design student. The patterns for the armor, which covers the entire body from the head to toe, was all handmade, and the materials used are different EVA foams, clay foam, LED lights, faux leather, and stretch knit fabrics all coming together to bring you Raiden from Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Keep that applause coming along, because we have Super Dez as Onyx Guard from Gears of War. This cosplay is a character from the video game Gears of War. It took Onyx Guard six months to build this cosplay. The armor, props, boots, and weapons are primarily made from EVA foam. Other materials include vinyl sheets, PVC pipes, LED, and some fake challenging part of the cosplay build was getting the proportions to be accurate. What motivates? We got it, we got that. Let's go, yes, make some noise for Super Dead. What motivates Onyx Guard to cosplay is bringing to life extremely detailed armor. Give it up for Super Dez. Up next is Superman Fit as Hawkman from Black Adam. Yeah. 
Jared, also known as Superman Fit, is a cosplayer from the DC area. He has always enjoyed creating things, but recently got into prop making after buying his first 3D printer. That quickly turned into three printers, which he now uses regularly to create props and costumes from different fandoms. After creating his first cosplay suit, the Arkham Knight, he needed new inspiration, which came to him in the Black Adam movie. He immediately fell in love with Hawkman's suit and knew that would be his next one to recreate. The costume features fully battle damage and weathered armor, a mace, and those wings are fully articulated. Next up, I want you all to welcome to the stage, give it up for cosplayer V as the mighty Thor from Thor Love and Thunder. Welcome in the mighty Thor presented by V Cosplay. V began her crafting adventure at a young age. She has been sewing for over 20 years, originally taught by her mom and grandmother. V likes to try new things, learning new skills and crafts as often as possible, and incorporating as many of those skills into her next cosplay as she can. Thor is made of trash. Oh. Thor is made of trash from at least three previous cosplays, and you can quite call her a hoarder because you can call her Dr. Jane Foster, the mighty Thor. Give it up for V. Here we have Well Rusted Workshop as Laputa Robot from Castles in the Sky. Well Rusted Workshop is a New Jersey based cosplayer and artist and a member of the Palladiums of Cosplay, one of the groups running the cosplay repair booth here at New York Comic Con. This costume incorporates a PVC skeleton which supports an EVA foam body. The arms and legs are attached with nylon webbing. Well Rusted Workshop has been cosplaying for 10 years and likes to make props and armor from games, movies, and anime. He's particularly proud of the details on the head of the robot. It is Well Rusted Workshop, y'all. Man, I love cosplay. I love it. All right, we're gonna welcome to the stage, say no to scrunchies as the creature from the Black Lagoon. Say no to Scrunchies turned 50 years old this year, but she only started cosplaying four years ago. This build was inspired by the creature from the Black Lagoon and the Terry Mugler exhibit at the Brooklyn Art Museum. She was able to make this entire creature for less than $100 by using clothes out fabrics and spangles. All the warbler, EVA foam, and foam clay are from Stash. The large scale shaped sequins are made out of diet soda can bottles and iridescent cellophane. It took over two years of diet soda consumption to have enough plastic bottles to finish this. She is most proud of the creature's sculpted EVA foam headpiece and feet. The most challenging part of the build for her was sewing the base gown and getting the fit just right. Give it up for Say No to Scrunchy. Here's Cosplay Katie as Electraza, the Life Binder from World of Warcraft. This costume is 100% handmade with over 250 hours of design and construction. This is Katie's second attempt at a full body armor cosplay. All armor plating and prop work was constructed using EVA foam, LED lights, and lots of patience. Each piece was prepared and finished using a multi-layered prime and paint process. This is Katie's third year competing at New York Comic Con, and she hopes you enjoy and appreciate all of the hard work that was put into it. And remember, <laughs> if it fires within, that burn the brightest. Welcome to the stage, Solaris Yuna as Deka from Horizon Forbidden West. Solaris Yuna from New York City is cosplaying as Dega from the game original series Horizon Forbidden West. She's a leader of the Chaplain and the Tenek Lowland Marsh Clan. 
Solaris keeps true to the clan's tribal look in her costume with fashion materials like raffia straw, wheat stems, braided cotton, and jute ropes, hand-dyed dual-colored sheep's wool costume. Parts of the breastplate are fashioned with actual wooden spikes before blending up upward with EVA foam. The tribal makeup you see there and the tattoos. The tech... Tenneth Clan commemorates moments and achievements and battles they survived on their skin as part of their history. And right now for Solaris Yunus, cosplaying for you all tonight is another one of those achievements. Fly on the wings of the ten. Give it up for Solaris. Sorry, I don't know if you saw, I dropped all my cards. I thought I was being real heroic and rescuing the day and then just gone. So, I think that's the end of our armor category, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Y'all, right. are you enjoying all the cosplay tonight? Perfect. All right, no, we got one more. My bad. Our final in this category, give it up for Superior Eagle Eye as Mimic from Dungeons and Dragons. No. There we go. All right, behold the mimic from Dungeons and Dragons, taking the form of a wooden bookshelf with a chest crowned prominently on top. This costume was created to give tribute to one of Dungeons and Dragons' most iconic monsters, the mimic. It would take you hours to see all of the references in this cosplay. Each panel is uniquely hand carved with no repeated patterns, giving the appearance of hidden eyes buried in the wood. Scattered throughout are over 200 plus handcrafted teeth to capture the essence of what makes a mimic a mimic. It's constructed with EVA foam, warbler, PVC pipes, and a variety of leathers. The end result is a transformative costume that appears to look like a wooden bookshelf when standing still, that's your cue. Standing still. <laughs> but it's actually a monster in disguise. Monster time. This costume has something for everyone who loves the world of Dungeons and Dragons. Superior Eagle Eye as Mimic. All right, everybody, that concludes the armor category. Do you all enjoy the armor category? Make some noise. Yeah. We're going to move this right along to the special effects category. So make some noise and welcome to the stage, Cattle Call Craft, as the prisoner from Outer Wilds. The prisoner howls their mournful song, never to wake from the purgatory created by their own kind. This puppet took eight months to create and it was made with love. A note directly from the cosplayer, please, please play Outer Wilds. <laughs> Y'all make some noise and give it up for Cattle Call Crowd. All right, you're coming a little too close to me. You need to go the other way, that's kind of. <laughs> a little scary there. Wow. All right, here we have Honeybird cosplay as King Richard and Tad Cooper from Gallivant. <laughs> Honeybird has watched Gallivant over 200 times, and King Richard is their favorite character. His gooviness and loyalty made him an obvious choice to cosplay. To create the doublet, Honeybird was dyed leather, lined, and satin. This cosplay features lots of buggles. 
hand tied facial hair and sideburns with a varying percentage of gray and an aged cut and restyled wig. Tad Cooper was created using PVC, upholstery foam, textured suede cloth, EVA foam, foam clay, repurposed wings, servos, linear actuators, and a smoke machine. Without the electronics, the supplies to make this cosplay cost just $100, everybody. Honey Bird Cosplay, y'all. Next up, we have Toxie Cat as Springtrap from Five Nights at Freddy's. Ashley Kong, also known as Toxie Cat, is a cosplayer from New Jersey. Her love for costumes, crafts, and sewing inspired her to pursue a Bachelor's of Fine Art degree in costume design. Her love for horror costumes and bringing fictional characters into the world of realism inspired not only this costume, but all of her work. Her spring trap costume took a total of seven months on and off and about 200 hours to complete. The entire costume is handmade, airbrushed, hand painted, glued, hand sewn. Real fire was used to burn and distress some areas. The jaw moves, the eyes light up, and the fingers bend. Y'all give it up for Toxie Cat. So good. All right, that does it for our special effects category. And now we move into our final category, which is our needlework category. Up first is Be the Spark cosplay as Anastasia. This is one of Be the Spark's cosplay's favorite 90s princesses. This historically inspired ball gown merges concepts from both the animated film and a dress worn by the real Anastasia Romanov. Since she was insistent on not getting glitter all over her sewing room this time, the gown gets its sparkle from yards of a delicate metallic silk chiffon and over 2,000 hand-sewn crystals, pearls, and beads. As a limb different cosplayer, Be The Spark Cosplay is passionate about using disability as a space to create art and has completed the look with a prosthetic arm reminiscent of a Fabergé egg, a hallmark of the Romanov Be The Spark Cosplay. Keep that applause going for Jara Be Sewing as Molly Mock Teeley from Critical Role. Jara Be Sewing is a New York City based cosplayer who has been building costumes for nearly 10 years. And as a DD nerd and proud member of the LGBT community, Molly Mock is a dream cosplay of theirs that they have been slowly working at in between other costumes for nearly four years now. The jacket was easily the most time-consuming piece, with hundreds of hours of hand embroidery, ribbons, and beads to complete Molly Mock's circus extravaganza. They used warbler, bottle caps, Christmas lights, and foam. They light up to show off Molly's blood hunter magic. His tattoos were all drawn on by hand onto the bodysuit underneath, and the fabric on his pants and shirt were both made by patchworking together fabric scraps and leftover from many other costumes. Long may he reign. Give it up for Jara B. Sewing. Here we have Kylander Couture as Outlander Patchwork Story Costume from Outlander. That's right. She started cosplaying five years ago at the age of 58 and is now officially a senior citizen. She credits her joyful appearance to all the time travel. Now she wanted to make a costume that would be a little interpretation of the Outlander books. Her inspiration was the latest book titled, Go Tell the Bees That I Am Gone. Her jacket mimics a honeycomb and it, there are over 30 three-dimensional bees that took over 600 hours to make. In total, she spent three years and over 11,000 hours of her creation. So real quick. Highlander. Can I, can I ask you just one question? Were you a senior citizen before you started doing this cosplay? No, I just turned, I just turned to a senior citizen. 
Congratulations, it's fantastic. <laughs> Kylander Couture, everybody. Cosplays for everyone. Welcome to the stage by Rantheon Cosplay as Seth Night Road from Trinity Blood. My Rantheon Cosplay is a mad scientist by day and a cosplay gremlin by night, hailing from Rhode Island. This costume features over 5,000 hand-sewn beads and crystals, displaying techniques such as deconstruction of lace, warbler, EVA foam, laser printing, cor corsetry, prop work, and more. It took over three months of work and required copious amounts of midnight Taco Bell trips to complete. <laughs> Y'all give it up for my Rantheon cosplay. Wow. Here's Patterner Cosplay as Raceland Majori from Dungeons and Dragons Dragon Lance Legends. <laughs> Patterner Mage Cosplay is a theater customer from New York who has been cosplaying for almost 20 years. They enjoy creating original designs based on novel characters because it lets them experiment with new techniques. They are always looking for ways to put additional embroidery into their designs. For their original design, Pattern Cosplay designed embroidered to, embroidery to represent magical lightning with silver dragon scale texture to symbolize power over dragons. Over 6,000 beads were individually embroidered onto the silk velvet cloak as a symbol of early premonitions regarding the War of the Lance. With over 400 hours of work in embroidery alone, this pattern is an homage to one of the best Dungeons and Dragons characters ever written. Patterner Cosplay. Wow. Y'all welcome to the stage, Reverie Cosplay as Betar Beckwin from Warhammer Pariah. Straight from the cover of Pariah by Dan Abnett, this Warhammer 40K cosplay came together over eight months. Beginning as a series of hand-drafted patterns, this cosplay incorporates a number of specialized skills, including gold work, embroidery, leather work, 3D printing, and metal work. This cosplay's focal piece is the leather coat with a reverse applique stained glass motif on the back and a silk inner lining. All metallic elements, collar pips, skull ring, and hairpin were physically sculpted in wax and then cast in sterling silver or brass. Lovingly weathered to reflect the muddy reality of living on the city of Queen Mob, this costume took inspiration from late Victorian menswear and morning jewelry. And Reverie Cosplay is proud to share it with you. Y'all make some noise for Reverie Cosplay. Here we have The Queen by Sarcasm Him. The graphic novel Snow, a Snow Glass Apples by Neil Gaiman. That's right from Toronto, Canada, and loves the challenge of bringing a 2D design to life. She is drawn to extreme amounts of detail, but this design turned out to be even more work than she originally thought. A recreation of Colleen Duran's cover art for Neil Gaiman's dark retelling of Snow White titled Snow Glass Apples. This costume took over two years to finish. It is completely hand embroidered. That's right using gold working, beading, and tambour embroidery. Even the cape lining is embroidered and beaded, resulting in the cape alone weighing almost six pounds. So please, New York Comic Con, bow for your queen. Next up, we have Simone Cosplays as Catherine the Great from Hulu's The Great. <laughs> Simone Cosplay is dressed as Catherine the Great from Hulu's The Great, always a fan of cosplaying as a rightful female ruler. She hopes to take home a crown of her own this year. Her Catherine the Great costume contains 12 different garments, from stays and petticoats to outer gown. The overcoat was painted using grid lines to ensure a pattern matched to the reference material and took a month to complete. The embroidered border took even longer, roughly six hours per flower. Topping it off is Catherine the Great's gold crown sculpted out of foam and featuring real deer antlers. 
She has loved creating this over-the-top and fun cosplay, inspired by equally over-the-top and fun character. Yo <laughs> I'll give it up for Simone Cosplays. <laughs> right this way, the queen. I think you're uh, concentrating a little too hard on the beverage. <laughs> Cheers. Here is Stardust Migu as Ira from Fire Emblem Genealogy of the Holy War. <laughs> After playing Fire Emblem, Stardust knew that she had to cosplay Ira, the game and character help get through some hard times. Out of her many years of cosplaying, this is Magoo's most passionate cosplay project and the one she has worked on the longest. It took about three years to complete. Incorporating needlework, embroidery, armor work, weathering, leather work, wig styling. She also hand embroidered the bottom details of the dress, which alone took six months to complete. Magoo also did heavy research on leather work, and it was her very first time incorporating it into her cosplay. She made the belt, bag, thigh-high bands, and sleeve bands out of cow-hide leather. That's right, she upped her game on the armor work, not only with the construction, but also the weathering. Give it up for Stardust Magoo. Next up, we have Sweet Potato Cosplay as Arwen by Hannah Alexander from Lord of the Rings. Inspired by Hannah Alexander's ethereal redesign of Arwen's iconic costume, this dress is made from four different hand-dyed silks and is covered with thousands of beads and crystals. It took several attempts to get the perfect purple, one of which somehow mysteriously ended up light blue. Each leaf that created the sleeves were embroidered by machine, then beaded by hand. Some hidden features include a custom corset for foundation as an illusion mesh bodysuit to maintain the structure of the embroidered neckline. The tiara and belt were 3D modeled from scratch and were printed three times to get the right proportions. Sweet Potato Cosway has loved Lord of the Rings since childhood, and she is thrilled to bring one of her favorite characters to the New York Comic Con stage. Y'all give it up for Sweet Potato Cosway. Here we have The Insanity Project as Ranko Konzaki from Grand Blue Fantasy. The Insanity Project is a local New York City area cosplayer who has been in the community for over eight years. They specialize in making the least practical costume imaginable with hits like the immovable red chandelier gown and the 50 pound unliftable hammer. The costume features a bodice made of 60 individually and differently shaped diamond pieces to create a seamless garment. It looks like you're moving okay in this one. Make some noise for the Insanity Project. Keep that applause going and welcome to the stage, Sunblade Cosplay as Princess Serenity from Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon has always embodied the power of love, friendship, and the willingness to face hardship for the good of all. Amber carries these ideas with her every day and was inspired to do so when she read her first Sailor Moon manga at the age of seven. She dedicated over 150 hours creating a historic Princess Serenity gown. The dress is made up of silk taffeta, silk, silk organza, glass pearl beading, lace, and embroidery. Amber even learned how to make bobbin lace using a Victorian pattern, which can be seen on the butt bow. 85% of the gown was hand sewn, resulting in many band-aids. Amber was inspired by portraits of Empress Josephine of France and the garments of her era. It is by far the most challenging project she has ever worked on, and she is so proud of the fine detailed work. Y'all give it up for Sunblade Cosplay. And our final competitor, it's Fifi's Cosplay as Uta from One Piece Film Red. <laughs> Fifi is a cosplayer whose specialty is needlework and lighting. Today she brings to life Uta from One Piece Red to transport you to another world with the power of her music. This costume took over seven months to create. It includes her own 3D modeled headphones with controllable LED lights and boots she constructed herself. She made her 110 centimeter long wig modular using a plain white wig as a base, which she dyed to the perfect shade of red. 
She styled it with aluminum foil, tacky glue, and foam clay. She is most proud of the jacket, which consists of over 9,000 yards of freehand machine embroidery, fleece, insulating fabric, foam, and polyfill for that extra puffiness. And it is extra puffy. Give it up for Fifi's cosplay. Wow, what did y'all think? <laughs> Judges, uh, how you feeling over there? They did not make it easy for us. <laughs> they didn't. Uh, did you see, uh, see anything that, uh, that may have changed your mind from some of the pre-judging here earlier today? Uh, we were, like we said, we were looking for uh, how their stage presence is, and I love when like a co contestant shows like energy on the stage because a lot of them were like actually really energetic when they came and met us at the pre-judging. So we, it's always nice to see, and I can understand uh, for a lot of them maybe this is not their first competition, like or maybe for some people their experience, but like some of them are also new competitors and sitting in a crowd this huge, it can be intimidating. Like I am also feeling a bit hot here, you know? <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, we were like really happy to see that everyone really held uh, like on, to, on, on their own. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just excited for the whole thing. Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about now. Yeah, hey, you can, you can say. We, we may need to have a few words privately. <laughs> like I said, I, I am getting a bit intimidated, so I can understand if they are. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. So I, I've been on this side of the panel before, and I know how extremely difficult it could be. Can you explain a little bit about what the hardest part about judging this tonight was? For me, it was that like the, the level of craftsmanship was just so high with everyone. And I, th this being my first competition, I was like, I just want to let everybody win. He was, gets a gold he, star. I just want to bake a cake with flowers. <laughs> yeah, he, everybody he was, he eat was, it and be happy. There it is. We're waiting but, for that. <laughs> but, I, but, but truthfully, I think the thing is, is that when, when you know with the three of us, we have the experience of working with our hands and having an idea in our head and then having the challenge of manifesting that into a garment that you can wear. And, and every one of us wears clothes. Most of us. So, <laughs> so, so to know what it feels like then to, to, to take this to another level where it's not just clothing, but like it's entering a, a, another reality. Like for, for me, it was like unbelievable to see how people took things that were two dimensional. Like where some, some of the contestants only had two reference photos or two reference images. And then they created, like they had to actually come up with a plan of how to make a garment. And it was like over and over, the contestants would leave and I would just turn to these two and say like, I, I want, what about this one? Yeah. Like it was, so, it's, it is, it's really hard. Yeah. Cosplay's it's, inspiring and I think everybody up there is just a complete inspiration. I, y'all, cosplay's so damn cool. <laughs> he was, I absolutely love agree. It. He was, he was cheating my scores by the way, I'm just letting you know. Uh, he was looking in my score sheet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> I just, it was like, I was like, it's hard. It's what what, what are you working on? Yeah, because You're surrounded by good people, though. So, like, the three brains together. Yeah, yeah so that's the great yeah. thing about panels. You know, like, everyone uh, brings something different. Sometimes I'm like, oh, my God, this is so amazing. And then, like, nah. And then sometimes they're like, oh, my God. And I'm like, um, no. Well, we really <laughs> did rely on each other's expertise yes. and our experience. Like, with, with Samir has so much experience making armor. So I, w like, I would ask him, well, wh like, how was this made and how difficult is that? And, and he was doing the same with us with sewing techniques. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just, it was what, what, what I feel is a, is a shame is that all of you out there don't have the opportunity that we had to actually go right up to the costumes and look at them close up because there's so, there were so many details and so many costumes that were incredible like close up were like even even in the space of two inches there was like th those bees that were made I mean like you know, 100% I was already looking up here y'all if, if you guys can see them in the con if they're way out or anything 
congratulate them, you know, tell them that they did amazing and just let them know that their work is appreciated. Each of them is a winner for being on this stage, honestly. Like, in a competition of this caliber, uh, we are literally, the whole, our job is basically nitpicking, <laughs> you know? Yeah, <laughs> only nitpicking only at this nitpicking. point. At this level, it's incredible to see what one person creates on their own because as part of this contest, the competitors have to have created everything on them. And we're seeing work that a team of 10 would struggle to complete. And these people do it all themselves. They're their own like stylists, they're their own pattern makers, they're their own embroiderers, their own armor makers. They're doing all of this and sometimes in a New York apartment, which is kind of insane. So with yeah. rats. <laughs> with yeah. rats. Those are our helpers here in New York. <laughs> All right. Got to feed them pizza every now and a while, but we got it. All right, so y'all, y'all are done yet, because you got to go back and figure out who's going to be representing New York and who our, all our winners are. So, uh, Jeremy, I want to put you in charge of them to make sure that we get them back in time. Here we go. Let's so, uh, one more time, do me a favor, make some noise for Jeremy and the judges. They're going to be back in just a moment. <laughs> but in the halftime, man, I'm excited. I get to bring out someone very special. I get to bring out. Not only is this man my best friend and my everyday phone call, but he is also the announcer for Family Feud. He's the warm-up guy for some of your favorite TV shows like The Voice, Mass Singer, Family Feud, and pretty much any show that can get him. Please put your hands and welcome to the stage, Ruben Irvin. Sweet baby Jesus. Oh my God, I don't like doing this show from backstage. Is it hard? I don't like it. Just been backstage the whole time. I took a five hour and I am humming. How's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? All right. So here we go. Hey. Right. I want to give away some stuff, man. I want to give away some stuff. All I right. Like, I, li I like that idea. This stage is sponsored by DoorDash. Now, folks know about DoorDash from de for delivering your food, but they do a lot of stuff. They do groceries now. They do convenience stores, and they do what I do when I landed on Wednesday night. I had them deliver liquor. That's what we need, all right? It's the first thing I did. I said, Tito's. All right, so that being said, we're going to play a quick game with all you folks out here. I'm going to need, I'm gonna, first things first, I am going to need the lights on in the house because I can't see a damn thing, all right? So, because for this game, I'm gonna need five people, all right? Now listen, I need five people that are a little, a little quick on your feet, all right? A little quick on your feet. I need energetic people, I need energetic people. I'm looking, I'm looking for people that are crazy like a Walmart sale. I need people that are Britney Spears on Instagram crazy. I need people that are Kanye West crazy. All right, I'm looking. Yeah, you sweet baby Jesus. Yes, that is fentanyl crazy right there, yeah. Come on up here, girl, yeah, come on up here. Just go up the side, up here. Wait, go up there, go up. hey, 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 hey. Go up the damn steps, girl. <laughs> hey, for you, you can help me out, you can help me out. Come on up here. I need, I need three more. I need, who picked that guy? All right, it's fine. I need two more. Two more, we're good? Come on up here, guys. Come on up here. Waste time on the mic with a dope rhyme. Jump to the rhythm, jump, jump to the rhythm, jump. And I'm here to combine beats and lyrics to make you shake your pants, take a chance. Come on and dance. All right. Guys, grab a girl. Two more. Make the swirl. It's your world and I'm just a squirrel. Trying to get a nut to move your We're going to go. We're going to go. Uh, Pink Deadpool can help me out. Two more. I need, oh, bruh stretcher for no damn reason. Yeah, you. Come here, bruh. Come here, bruh. One more. You're gonna go up the steps right over here, my friend. You're gonna go up the steps right over here. One more. Absolute psychopath. You have five. Oh, I didn't pick that guy, so it's cool. All right, here we go. So that's our five. Come on up here. Stand side by side. Act like you know each other. 
Here we go. We're going to start down over here. Hey, Ru I, hey, hey Ruben, Ruben, Ruben. What's up? So they think they're coming up to dance because that's what we did last year. Yeah, we're not doing that. Because there's some, there's some returning champs up here. But I see. I see. They're, they're, they're kind of, that, that's what they I think. I know. I already know. No, no, no. I, I didn't you, realize who it was until he got up here. Yeah. But years ago, he came oh, yeah. oh, no, no, no. Hey, I, oh, I got shit. You. All right. You wanna sh I got shushed on the microphone. All right. So we'll start down here. We're going to meet you down here. All right. How you doing, man? Hey, what's your name? Gomez. Gomez, what do you do? I help vets. You what? Help veterans. Oh, you help veterans. That's very cool, man. Do you, like, work at the VA or? Yeah, I, well, nonprofit. I help them find jobs. Okay. You could just talk. You, you, we, we ain't going to take taxes from you, homie. It's going to be all right. Are we just ask, just ask some questions. I mean, who, hey, who are you? Sam. Sam, and, Sam yeah. how old are you, Sam? 11. 11 years old. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, uh, Sam tried to stab me last year. Oh. <laughs> oh. What? S Sam, are these knives real on your back? No. Perfect. All it right. was very sharp. Sam, what has been the best thing you've seen at Comic-Con so far? Maybe a short guy? <laughs> a Pac-Man suit? Red hat? You suck. All right, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I could say that. I have children. They suck. All right, here we go. Uh, who are you? Hi, Barbies. I'm Barbie. Okay, Barbie. Barbie, will you not be in Barbie? What do you do for a living? I am Mia. I'm a college student and a YouTuber. Mia Rivera TV. Subscribe. I like it. I like it. Who are you? Matt. Matt, who picked you? Nobody. Uh, just walk your ass up here. Uh, what do you do for a living? Work for Costco. Oh, man, I love me some Costco, baby. Yeah. Woo! All right. Last Bro, you need to get him to hook you up with a discount if I he's stuck up. Something, man. And who are you? Ox King. Oh, 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 oh. What your mama said. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. We know who he is. Everyone I, in the room. You know what? I didn't even realize who he was. It's something about you that makes me want to pick you all the time. All right. So here we go. We're going to play a different game than we've done before. This is our DoorDash Dash for the Door game. Okay? What's going to happen is this. In just a few moments, I'm going to get you guys down here on the floor. Um, and in the back, in that back corner, way back there, is a table. Okay? On that table are three boxes. In those three boxes, you're going to need to grab four items, one at a time, and bring them back up to the stage. And you're going to do so and fill them inside of these bags right here, one at a time. The four items are an apple, tape, an energy drink, and then a makeup palette. All right? It's like an eyelash palette. It's like, a, like an eye thing palette. I don't know what the hell it is. It's a palette. All right? So... The, the, the apple, energy drink, palette, tape. There you go. Thank you for helping me out. All right. So you're going to have to get those bad boys one at a time and bring them up to this gate right here. All right. The winner of this game is going to win 50 bucks. All right. So right off the bat, that is, that's right, folks. That is one thousandth of a rent here at New York. All right. Hey, this one. You can, all right? So now, first things first, we're going to get you guys all the way down here. Come on down here to the floor. Come on down here to the floor with me. I can't run fast because I, I got asthma, all right? Thank you, sir. All right. So, contestants, I want you on this side of the gate. On this side of the gate, right over here. On this side of the gate. Come on down. Come on down. All right. Here's your bag. Here's your bag. Here's your bag. All right, so now, so now, hold on. Now, when you get back up here, now remember, you're going to need to put your bag on the ground and remember which one is your bag, okay? So you're going to run to the, you cannot run. Listen to me. You cannot run. We tried that. The insurance would not let us, all right? So you were going to need to speed walk back to the corner, grab one of each item, come back and put it in your bag, all right? It's in that back corner right there with the exit sign right over there, right by the doors, okay? One at a time. Four items. Now, when you get back up here, just like a door dasher, you're going to need to ring the doorbell, and the person who gets all four wins. Obviously, there are no doorbells, okay? When you get up here, you're going to need to make an animal noise as your doorbell. Sir, when you get up here, 
I need you to make a noise like a chicken. Let me hear your chicken. Perfect, perfect, perfect. When you get up here, I need you to sound like an elephant. Let me hear it. Perfect, perfect. When you get up here, I need you to sound like a seagull. Let me hear it. Hey, real quick, real quick, before we, start, before we go on, who are you here with? I'm here with my friends in the back. Your friends in the back. They are hiding because they don't want anybody to know who the hell. Nah, they hide. Nah, put your hand down. You know you don't care. All right, now, when you get up here, I need you to make a noise like a velociraptor. rapper. Here, let me hear it. You need Jesus. All right, here we go. <laughs> I don't know. I've never heard of a lots of rapper sound like that in my life. All right. Now, when you get up here, I need you to run back, and I need you to sound like the world's sexiest ding dong. All right. I need. I mean. I need a ding. Dong. I need. I need. I need it sensual. Let me hear it. Ding dong. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's good. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. Now, put your bags down. Put your bags down. Remember which one is your bag. Remember, no running. Don't hit the camera, and everybody's going to cheer you on. So here we go. On your mark, get set, walk. Go, go for it. I say walk, damn it. Oh, they're going. They're going to the back, folks. They are headed to the back one at a time. Whose it's going to be? They have to grab four different items and bring them back up here. Oh, let's see. The girl Deadpool is in the lead right now. They are in the back just like a door dasher. They have to make sure they have the correct item and run it up back here as quickly as possible. Captain America is in the lead right now. I said walk. That is a trot, sir. Oh, yeah. Move your booty, sir. Move your booty. Put it in your bag. Hurt. Cheer them on, people. Cheer them on. Here we go. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This girl is cheating. She just got all four of the damn items at the same time. I swear, I told y'all kids I'm, suck. I'm pretty I sure we're you. violating some work laws oh. with her. Oh, oh, wait, oh, oh, what's he got? You can only grab one at a time, sir. You can only grab one at a time. So you better go back, go. Go, 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 go. You can only grab one at a time, go. Go, you gotta grab one at a time, go. Hurry up, touch the box and come back. Touch the box and come back. Who do you think's gonna win, folks? Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Root on your champion. Oh, Captain America. Look at him. He is moving. There you go, look at him. That is America's ass right there. You better do it. Come on, sir. Come on, Thor, you're not sexy enough. This man is sweating his ass off. You haven't done cardio in weeks. Come on, stop running, Barbie. Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Uh, uh oh, stop running! Uh, uh. How many you got left? One left, hurry up! So far, Dan Pool is in the lead, folks! Who's it gonna be? Oh, oh, he is sweating his ass off. Oh, he is about to have an entire asthma attack. It's okay, man, we're gonna get that cholesterol level down for you today. How many you got? You got all four? You got all four? Make the noise, sir. Cut it down, Elliot. Make the noise. That's just Damn. heavy breathing. Oh, no, no. He, have, he is having it. Die. He about to die. He about to, Maybe right. you should give him a hit off here your you inhaler. Got this, you got this. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Sexiest thing now? Yeah. Pedro Pascal calling. <laughs>
Yeah. You know what they have? They what? have an apple. They have an apple. And tape. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so here's the thing. All right. We could either stop now, play some music, or, I mean, they can't fire me. I already got my check. So we could play yeah, I did. another game. I, I like that. Let's do that. I think, I think since our reigning champion isn't dancing this year, yep. we need to get some people out the audience. Yeah, I think so too. I think we should do that. All right, so here we go. So here we go for what? this one. Oh, actually, uh, we're ready now. Boo! Hey, do me a favor. Audience, make some noise for my best friend Ruben over here. Hey. I, got, I know we can't do the game. I know we can't do the game. Yep. But I have not been back to New York Comic Con since the Panini. And I am super happy that I'm back. And this is the only good thing about the strike is because I don't got no work in L.A. So, hell, I can come to New York and make some money. All right? So, thank you guys so much. I hope you guys have a great time. Let's do this thing. Here we go. One more time. Please make some noise for Ruben. All right. Jeremy. They're ready. How'd that go back there? Well, I didn't have to do anything, but they are ready. <laughs> was, was there, how, you know, how'd they do? Were they, was there arguing? Did they hit anybody? There was like... a rumble back there, and that was sponsored by DoorDash. So, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Real quick, before we bring our judges out, uh, we had a, a trivia competition that you came in using a QR code, and we do have a third, second, and first place winner. Uh, you probably got an email. Uh, that you'll receive once you walk outside of the building, up the escalator, out the doors, into the real world. You'll get that email. But third place was Cody. Second place was Melissa. First place was Noah. Third place walking away with a $15 uh, gift card. Second place walking away with a $25 gift card. And first place walking away with a $50 gift card. Give them a round of applause for playing our Door Dash trivia here. All right. Hey. I have your gift card, so if you're here, come see us at the end of the performance. We'll hand them to you. Otherwise, uh, dinner's on me. All right, here we go. Uh, do me a favor. Please put your hands together and welcome back our judges. Welcome back, Marita, Rajiv Suraja, and Samir Bundela. Make some noise. How was it? How'd it go? Well, they kept looking at me to be the tiebreaker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that close? Oh, yeah. It oh. was very, very close. It, it felt like a lot of pressure when yeah. both of them would look at me and be like, what do you think? <laughs> now you have to pick. So it's all on you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there we go. Sadly, so you guys can blame me. <laughs> sadly, sadly, we didn't have any major malfunction, so it didn't help out, you know. So we had to decide on our own. <laughs> yeah, but I love it. All right. All right. Well, uh, just so you know what's happening and what's going on, we do have a winner from all of our categories. There's a winner from our armor, our needlework, and special effects category. And then we have our overall winners, which, of course, are first, second, and third place. Those winners are going to walk away with if third place. It's going to walk away with $250, second place with $500, and first place gets $1,000. They're all going to get medals and tickets to New York Comic Con in 2024. However that first place champion, they're headed to Chicago, where they're gonna compete in the Crown Championship of Cosplay to bring home that title to New York. All right, so up first, we'd like to welcome our armor category to the stage. Make some noise for our armor folks, everybody. There we go. Y'all keep that applause going. Give it up for our armor category this evening. Go ahead and bring it on down. You can stand here. All this incredible cosplay. Here we go. So many incredible cosplayers. Keep it going, keep it going. Let's hear it, let's hear it. Keep it going. There we go, there we go. All right, hey, one more time, do me a favor, make some noise for our armor cat, our uh, armor category. All right, so what we want you all to do 
as we wait for uh, our final armor category. <laughs> All right, are you ready to find out who our judge chose us as our winner? All right, Jeremy. Who's the winner in our armor category? Real quick, y'all strike an epic pose on three. One, two, three. All right, are y'all ready for the winner of the armor category? Uh, that didn't seem like it. I said, are y'all ready for the armor winner? There we go. Winner of the armor category is Super Des as Onyx Guard. Y'all make some noise for Super Des. Congratulations, Super Des, and everybody in the armor category. All right, one more time. Right. Make some noise for our armor category. Y'all can come down here. Congratulations, Super Des. nightmares tonight. So good, so good. All right, y'all ready for the next category? Make some noise for all of our special effects category cosplayers. Yes, keep that applause going for our special effects. All right. Y'all ready? Uh, I'm ready. I got Here we go. Are y'all ready for the winner of the special effects category? Here we go. And the winner is? Toxic Cat as Spring Trap! <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't want to. And they say that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Congratulations, Toxic Cat as Spring Trap. And y'all make some noise for the other cosplayers in the special effects category. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Man, I judges, I can tell that was a tough category because that detail up close on all three of those was, uh, you know, again, don't envy you. So uh, what's up next, Jeremy? All right, last category is needlework. Y'all make some noise for the needlework category. There we go, there we go. Make some noise, make some noise. So sparkly up here. Keep it going, keep it going. Let's make that noise a little louder. There we go. Such a beautiful category. That's right, clearly our largest category tonight. <laughs> they just wow. keep coming, all right. All right, y'all ready for the winner? Here we go, and the winner of the needlework category. Make some noise for Patton or Mage Cosplay as Rosalind Marjorie. All right, all 
all of you strike that epic pose. Here we go. Three, two, one. Strike a pose. Y'all give it up for our needlework category one more time. Y'all give it up. All right, it's that time. It's time to find out who our overall winners are today. So, who do y'all think it should be? All right. Y'all look real nervous over there all of a sudden. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> all right. In third place, winning $250, a giant check they'll have no idea what to do with, a medal, and tickets to New York Comic Con here in 2024. Please make some noise for Say No to Scrunchies. <laughs> All right, here we go. Strike an epic pose on three. One, two, three. All right. Second place of $500. A giant check they're not going to know what to do with. A medal and tickets to New York Comic Con in 2024. Please make some noise for V. Here we go. It's the big one. Again, this. I can't be louder than y'all. But the winner of $1,000, a giant check they're not going to know what to do with, a medal, and to represent New York Comic Con at the 2024 Crown Championship Cosplay. Please make some noise for Sarcasm Hive! Right down front here. You know what? Put the giant checks on the. Well, we'll do one photo with the big giant checks, and then good luck putting those in your luggage or <laughs> fitting them in your apartment. It's probably about the checks about as big as my hotel room. So here we go. Strike a big pose on three. One, two, three. All right. Now, put the checks down on the ground and let's strike a real pose. And let's do this right now. If, they, if, they're, if they're close, let's bring out all of our cosplayers one more time. We got this giant stage. We got plenty of room. Hey, do me a favor. There's a lot of people that helped put this show on today, from the technical crew in the back of the room to the stage management crew behind the stage. A big shout out to Sela and Emma from Reed Pop. They're the ones that do all the work behind the scenes to make sure this happens. That's right. <laughs> you stay there. <laughs> you stay there.
y'all, all this couldn't be possible and all this hard work and all the judging. Please give it up one more time this evening for our incredible judges. Make some noise. Hey, also do me a favor. Make some noise for my co-host. Give it up for Jeremy, everybody. Don't forget Atomic Blonde back here. And hey, you can be up here just like they are. You just got to get started and take a step because cosplay's for everybody. One more time, do me a favor, make some noise for all these talented cosplayers on the stage.